Do you look at the camera or are you? Uh, it doesn't you. matter because I'm just, I'm going to stay back here. You. So, yeah. Okay. So the last time I talked with you was actually at the very end of season one and all the stuff that happened to your character Cassandra and you really didn't know what was going to happen going into <laughs> season two or so you said. Now I'm sure you could not have said anything, but yeah. going into season two, how much did you know about what was going to happen to your character? didn't know what was going to happen in season two. They hadn't written any episodes, you know, at that point to tell me. Uh -huh. um, but I think about two or three months before we started filming, Carl, who is, who you interviewed, who is the creator of the show, Genius, um, he was really kind. He sent me an email and just kind of let me know ahead of time, like, just so you know, Cassandra does that in this episode, want to prepare you. Um, he told you by email? Via email. Luckily, he's not my husband or my boyfriend, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because that would have been a no-no. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he was really kind to do that because I know a lot of shows they don't tell right. you, maybe because they don't know, or maybe because for whatever reason. So he was really sweet to kind of just let me plan for that. That really helped me plan for my future and other episodes and or you know other projects and things to do. Um, so. Went into season two. I had a pretty good idea. I had a damn good idea of you know what was happening with Cassandra, what her arc was going to be, and her story. So, what did you think about 10K being the one to have to put Cassandra down? You think here's, that was pretty fitting? Yeah. You know, here's the funny thing. Um, when he told me that she dies, I said, "Does 10K do it?" Because in season one, we had had an interview and they said, you know, if you were a zombie and you had to die, well, how would you want to go? Uh -huh. And I said, I think 10K should be the one to take Cassandra out. Uh -huh. And he, so when I said this to Carl, I sort of heard like a, a gas on the other end of the phone, or maybe it was in person, and I wasn't sure if he did that because he was surprised that I read his mind, or if it was like an aha light bulb moment, like, oh, that's a great idea. I bet it was. Yeah, but I, I think that, yes, absolutely, it was appropriate to have 10K do it. He definitely had to be the one. I'm waving bye to some fans back there. We're at um, Walker Soccer Chicago, in case you, of those you don't know, and it is amazing. You are missing out. <laughs> a little bit about uh, Cassandra's relationship with 10K. You discussed a little bit at the panel, which I did not even know, how, uh, what, uh, how Carl Schaefer envisioned it as opposed to how it actually played out on screen. Yeah, so, um, you know, like I was saying in the panel, uh, that was the first thing they asked us, what's your relationship with, with 10K? What's Cassandra's relationship with 10K? Um, when Nat and I read the script, we thought it was an intimate relationship. We thought at the very least 10K was attracted to Cassandra and that they might have some kind of bond. Um, you know, whether it was romantic or not, we didn't know, we weren't sure. Um, but neither of us thought it was, like, you know, far-fetched um, to think that there was sort of some kind of uh, attraction or a bond between the two of them. Um, Carl did not have that vision. He thought that we were going to be like a more of a brother-sister relationship. Um, but <laughs> they just kept writing things in the script where like Cassandra goes to hug 10K or 10K something, says something to Cassandra. And then when we would have different directors come on set, they would say, now give this girl a jealous look, you know, as if, as if Cassandra is jealous of this girl on 10K. And so it was really interesting we weren't the only ones who thought like 10K and Cassandra had um, had an intimate bond. There were other people there too, and I'm glad because I think it makes for a more interesting story. Um, not that the brother or sister thing wouldn't wouldn't make sense, but um, yeah. yeah. The so. fans certainly thought that there was more. I think if you follow <laughs> it on Twitter. So yeah. I have. I've heard. I just had someone recently ask me, "Are you guys dating?" And there are people on Instagram. <laughs> I think they're living together, and I'm just like, are they following us? Like, how do they know any of these things? Like, what's going on? You know, last season, 
they brought Mac back after he had been killed. Very, very good episode. Yes, I love that episode. Yes. And so they did that with his character. Yes. Uh, if they asked your character, you to come back for any type of flashbacks, would you be open to that? Oh my God, I would love it. I actually said to Carl um, when he was doing the flashback episode, I thought it'd be really funny if um, we opened up uh -huh. on a strip club, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, and ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Sunshine. Uh -huh. And so you like see that Cassandra, that was her background. That's how she had the name Sunshine and all of that. Um, oh, I would love that. Yeah, I think he took the strip club scene to episode, to season two, episode one. But um, I would, I'd love to do a flashback episode. Z Nation just seems like a really, really fun show to work on. The last question is, what were your most memorable, uh, exciting moments working on the show? Oh my gosh, people ask this so often and I always go blank. Um, and then I thought of something and then I forgot. What are you, you going to say? Being strapped to the car when you... Ah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, so let's see, season two, if we couldn't find somebody like my son, and my build to be my stunt double uh -huh. um, because we film in Washington and there's not a lot of stunts, uh, stunt people up there. Um, you just didn't do it all yourself. I did. I did do the stunt myself. So they were like, say we are going to strap you to this car in a harness uh -huh. and we're going to just start driving for like 30 miles an hour. Is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And they did and it was so much fun. It was really, really great. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love season two, episode one, where we are all together in the strip club and we're watching the strippers and it's just like, all the look on our faces is priceless. Who picked out your wardrobe for season two? Did you have a say in it or somebody else? I did, I did have a say in it. Um, you know, it was written as white fur coat and yeah. gold lame shorts. Um, and so I was talking to the, our wardrobe uh, designer who is amazing as well, Ashley Russell. Um, I, you know, I said, what do you be decided for a top? And she's like, I don't know, I haven't really thought about that. And I'm like, gold lame top, duh. <laughs> like, it's gotta go, we gotta go superhero on this. Um, and then, so they added that, and they added the gloves, so I was glad to have a little bit of a, a I didn't know whether you'd done or maybe he had any input in that. No, no, but I mean, if he had, I wouldn't have put it past him. It was all Carl, Carl's crazy mind. Well, thank you so much. Love to you on the show and hope to see you again. Cross thank finger. you. Yep, fingers crossed. Yeah, thank fingers you. Crossed.